Hello, this is Jason at the DVE store. Today I'm going to show you a few things about the ATAM software control, specifically how to create a graphic for it with uh, an alpha channel. It will work so you can use it as a downstream key to overlay over a video source. Um, so we're going to use uh, Photoshop and then I'll show you how things work once you get into uh, the media pool and how to work it uh, on the switcher uh, interface as well. Make it all come together. If we go into Photoshop, that's where we want to begin. Uh, Command N for a new document. Now I noticed in this version of Photoshop uh, I actually don't have uh, the proper preset. If you go under film and video there's uh, a bunch of presets there. There's only one 4K preset and it's the 4096 by 3112 which is the kind of the film version of 4K. That's not what I'm using here uh, with the ATEM Production Studio 4K. Um, I actually need a document that's 3840 by 2160. So it's easy enough to create a preset if you need to. I noticed on my other machine that I actually do have a preset. I think I have a, a slightly newer version of Photoshop CC on that machine so you may have a preset. If not, you can just create one by typing in 3840 by 2160. I'm going to go ahead and make that a transparent background and save the preset. Um, I'm going to call it a 4K 2160p. Just hit OK. <clears throat> and then OK one more time. And here we have a nice blank canvas that's exactly the size that we need that we're using with the switcher. Now if your switcher is set to 1080p then obviously you'll use a canvas that size. But in this case we're doing 2160p 4k. So we'll go ahead and make a lower third graphic. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool here. The fill will probably be defaulted to a uh, solid color, but I want a gradient fill for my rectangle. And I'm actually going to pick the uh, foreground to transparent uh, gradient option. And I'm going to go ahead and actually change my foreground color. So I'm going to go down here and just pick a nice blue hit OK. So this is what we've got. So I'm going to click on, double click on the gradient here to open the gradient editor. I'm going to grab this guy up here. I'm going to move it over. So we can have a nice smooth transition from solid to transparent. Click this stop here and reduce the opacity to I don't know, 80% something like that. Uh, so that's that's great. I'm just going to create a custom gradient and call it lower third. Hit OK. Now we've got our uh, rectangle tool selected. We're just going to drag a nice rectangle out here. And as you can see, we have a nice gradient happening there. Oh, one other thing is that this uh, gradient is set to linear and is zero uh, on the rotation. I think the default is 90, which is going to do this kind of a, a gradient, but we want zero for this. Actually set our foreground and background back to default by hitting D, and then we're going to hit X to reverse them. And then we're going to hit T for text. We're going to click in our gradient box. We're going to type in Abby. And then we're just going to grab this, move it over here just so we can position our text about halfway up wherever we want it. We should give Abby a last name. Abby Blankenship. There we go. 
Okay, that's taken care of. I'm going to make this a little bit um, nicer just by duplicating uh, our rectangle layer. Command J, and I'm going to drop the opacity down on that one to 80 or so. I'm going to hit V. I'm just going to shift it down about right there. And I'm going to Command T to transform it and just scoot it up here like this. Hit enter. So there we have a simple but nice lower third graphic ready to go. So in order to get this out of Photoshop and into the ATEM software, uh, you can do it manually by uh, creating a black layer. Uh, actually, this, there's a built-in action that you can use to um, turn that layer into an alpha channel, which we will see here. Um, and there's one other step that's required. Too much of a pain. Um, what's nice is that Blackmagic, uh, when you install the ATEM software control, it installs a plugin into After, excuse me, into Photoshop, which will allow you to just go to File Export, uh, ATEM Switcher Media Pool. We'll click on that. We'll have some options that come up. Uh, you have your switcher IP address. This is the default. Uh, if you've changed it to something other, you will need to make sure that that's correct here. Otherwise, it won't know where to find your switcher and the software. So we can name uh, this lower third. We'll just call it Abby Lower Third. We'll put it in Media Pool Location 1. Pre-multiply Alpha, yes. Uh, that's fine there. We're going to hit Export. So just for further explanation, the software, the ATEM software, doesn't just take any graphic file that has transparency. Uh, it actually needs an alpha channel, which is you can't just use any old file. You got to use a, this process or create an alpha channel manually in Photoshop. Okay, so we've got that exported. Let's go to our ATEM software control into the media pool. And it's loaded right here. Uh, still number one. You can see Abby Blinkenship. Um, we've got it in uh, set as media player one. Now, if uh, if it was not, uh, for instance, let's uh, let's just do this. Let's drag this blank over here. So um, yours may look like this. It may say no media assigned to your media player. So you just grab whatever graphic you want, throw it into media player, and now you're you'll be able to access this uh, with the switcher interface. So depending on the ATEM switcher that you have, uh, you may have more media players. You may have media players that uh, can take uh, target sequences for animated video files. Uh, in this case, this is the ATEM Production Studio 4K. I just have the option of stills and uh, two media players. So I've got uh, my lower third imported. It's set as media player one. We can go back to the switcher tab. So here we are in the ATEM software control interface. Let's go ahead and uh, minimize Photoshop in the background. So we've got three camera sources, uh, cameras five, six, and seven. Um, program out currently is camera seven, and preview is camera five. So what we want to do is load uh, the lower third that we created and have it fade up over our program out. First we have to set up this downstream key over here, uh, which actually is already set to media player one. You can see all the choices here. When you select that, it automatically selects media player one as both the fill and key source. Uh, the fill is the, the solid part of the graphic. The key is the transparent part. And that's what allows you to overlay uh, over your video. So we can, oh, and also we need to have pre-multiplied key selected. So we can go ahead and close that. So this controls our downstream key number one and uh, downstream key number two we don't have set up right now. 
But if we just hit auto, you can see that our lower third fades in over our program out. And then the on air button lights up to tell us that it's live. And this rate will change the duration of the fade. So we can set it to two seconds if we want to. We hit auto. It's going to take two seconds to fade out. Set it back to one. Hit auto and boom, it fades in and out. So this is how we overlay a lower third graphic on a video output. So now if we, if we switch uh, sources between uh, camera seven and camera five just by hitting cut, we can see that our, our downstream keyer number one remains on the air. So we can cut back and forth, and it just uh, stays there. So in some situations, that's what you want. In others, uh, you don't want that to happen. You just want it to stick with the uh, particular source you set it on. So if that's the case, uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, hit the tie button, and then we'll hit cut. So now you can see that when we switch sources, our lower third stays with, it's tied to our original source. And then when we cut the program output, no longer shows. And as you can see, it, it's the on air button is off. If we hit cut again, we go back to our original source. We have the lower third there. Uh, the downstream keyer shows up as on air once again. So a couple different ways that you can put the lower third on air. So there's a number of steps to go through to get uh, your graphic made and get it input and get it all working. But once you get that figured out, it's pretty simple. It's certainly a little more complex than, say, making a lower third in uh, a nonlinear editing software package. But uh, this is how it works. Over on the right-hand side, we have our processing palettes, color generators, media players, upstream key, uh, transitions downstream, keys, uh, fade to black. So you can click on each one of these and see the options within. And it's good to know that these are listed in the order that things are processed in the mixer. So. For instance, fade to black is at the end of the list. So when you enable a fade to black, like so, it fades absolutely everything out. Any downstream keys, transitions, uh, upstream keys, media players, color generator, everything is faded out. Let's go ahead and put the lower third back on, back on the air. Let's fade that on. Now I'll show you this. We've got a, let's set up a, a wipe. Let's go to our transitions. Just do a, a basic wipe here. Close that out. Now if we uh, transition uh, between our sources, camera 7 and camera 5 here, uh, with the auto transition button. And again, this is not the auto downstream key button, it's the transition button see that our wipe happens, but it does not wipe the lower third, our, our downstream key. It does not affect that because the downstream key is being processed after the transition. You can see the order here. So that's some of the basics as far as uh, getting, uh, creating graphics, getting them into the ATEM software control, and then getting them on the air. So until next time, over and out.